Also, people commented on the black mold. I don't know if it's black mold or just dirt. So what I did was I came out here one day with our hose and a scrubby pad, a scrubby brush, and I just went at it. And you can see the difference. It cleaned it off pretty well. We actually have a pressure washer, which we might drag out to use. I cleaned off the top of that. But we were gonna have some friends of ours come over uh, the other day, but I just wanted to make sure, because I don't know if it's black mold or not. So I just wanted to get rid of all this shit. And it goes all the way around the property. So that gives us something to do. Another project. I also have the mop and the broom over there. This is the Kano version of the Filipino broom. I highly recommend this because I do not like bending over and sweeping like Filipinos do. So I just get some hose clamps, an old thing, and I just hooked it up like this. Works really well. I was supposed to sweep and mop the house before Chichai and Janice came back, but I got a little too busy sorting through clothes to do that. Man, this is gonna turn into one of those wrong rambling fucking videos, I can tell. All right, uh, we also have, this we transferred, this was our old Boston Bay that we had a pink house. We transferred this over. This is the bedroom right here. And as you can see, I blocked one of the windows off with a 10 mm polystyrene radiant barrier. Um, there was also a big pile of trash. They were burning trash here. I'm not a big fan of burning trash. So again, what I did was I dug it all out. There was actually some good soil under there, so we transported that so that Chicha could use that for her plants. And that's actually her calling in the background. And again, I just took some grass and just stuck it down there and watering it, and hopefully it'll grow in. Who knows? We got to get rid of this coca lumber. If anybody knows anybody in Dumaguete, any uh, coca lumber producers that want to take our coca lumber for free, they can have it because this is where we're going to put our burn pit over here for burning stuff. Uh, water pressure. Uh, one of the bad things about living in this area of Banilad, and I can't complain, man. I mean, just look at this. Look at this neighborhood. It's so freaking quiet. The people are so nice. The roads are so clean. Ugh. But one of the bad things, in the morning, starting about seven o'clock to about 3.30, the water pressure goes really low. So it doesn't trip your hot shower and it's really hard to like water plants and stuff. So what I did was I got this, uh, I traveled to North Korea. This is actually a Korea brand. I think it's Hanel. And it's basically just a pressure pump. And it's been working really well. We don't have to use it all day. So we got a little circuit breaker right here to turn it off and on. What I wanna do is get a remote control circuit breaker. So instead of having to walk out here, again, this is a great example of fucking first world problems because having to walk out here and turn on the water pressure is a pain in the ass. So this works really well. Ugh. I think this thing only costs like 11,000 pesos. It's cheap. And it's putting about 20 PSI through so you get all the water pressure you need. I didn't want it too high because I didn't trust these old pipes. I mean, you can put it up to like 40 PSI, but I don't want to blow the whole system out. Uh, this is our storage tank. This is it's about 1,800 pesos. I actually have to have the guy come back out because the float is not working. As you can see, there's too much water in it. But the good thing about the way he's got it set up is if there is a brownout, it automatically bypasses and we still have low water pressure, but it's okay. Again, there's another one of the faucets that we changed out. This is the terrace up there. I haven't used that that much. This is more of the work that Chi Chai has been doing, beautifying this area. This right here, it's pretty low tech. The sun beats on this window in the morning and it gets hot. So I just put that up and when the sun is off of it, I take it off pretty easy peasy. We did not do any cleaning or I did not do any cleaning before doing this video. So it's raw Philippines life. All right, let's head in. Yes, the whole porch area. Oh, one of the problems we are having, the only problem we're having so far is the porch is leaking. There is a leak somewhere up on the roof. It is affecting the hardy flex. You can see it bowing in certain areas. We've notified the landlord. They said they were gonna come this week, but they didn't. 
Uh, it's their house, so eventually this Hardy Flex is just gonna collapse in and it's gonna be more work for them to fix it. But they seem like very nice people, very good landlords. Another thing I'm gonna do is, we gotta clean this door. This door is filthy, look at the screen. This is something we're gonna do. We gotta brown out on Sunday, so we're gonna do that. I gotta put a pneumatic cylinder on this right here and keep this part, so when we leave, we take the pneumatic cylinder with us. Uh, this is Zoe's room. This is actually the living room, but it's kind of become Zoe's play area. Nice ceiling fan, she loves the ceiling fan. Uh, again, this is my office, the entertainment center. We've got the air conditioner in here. This is gonna be, and excuse the mess, this is gonna be Janice's room. And it's pretty nice. We gotta put some curtains in and everything. She's got lots of storage. She's not getting an air conditioner. She's tough, she's rubber cold. And the kitchen area is a freaking mess and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we got the water heater installed in now. We're gonna get some muriatic acid. We gotta do some cleaning on the sink. We gotta do some cleaning on the toilet bowl, not a big deal. I've already purchased pints of the brown paint, pints of the white paint, and pints of the orange paint because we have a baby and she likes to cruise around. We call this her Cylon Radar. And even though we have put rubber bumpers on it, she can still do some damage with this thing. So we got the paint to do any touch up as needed. All right, but the main purpose of this video with all this babbling aside uh, is once again to extol the great properties of this simple 10 millimeter polystyrene radiant barrier insulation. You wouldn't think that it would be that effective being this thin because in the United States we got that pink shit that they lay about six feet deep. So when I saw that stuff, I was like, I don't know. I don't know how good this is gonna work. But let's take a look at some temperature difference. We got it already installed. It's uh, about 90 square meters we had to install. There is none installed on the porch. The sun is actually now off the porch, but let's check the temperature anyways. Uh, it's about 91, 93 degrees out here and again I apologize to everybody else that is using the metric system but it's 93 degrees out here and let's head inside where it's all been laid and uh, it's 82 so that is an 11 degree difference that is freaking remarkable and as soon as we installed it, because when we first moved in, like for the first week, I mean, every day it was freaking hot in here because there's no shade over the top of the house. The roof was heating up and it would just, that once the heat gets in here, you got these little windows, it doesn't dissipate. So you're just struggling all day. Um, another example of how good this insulation works. And I think it was only like 4,500 for all the materials, which is about 90 US dollars. So uh, let's take, so it's 83 where the insulation is. And the only part of this that's not insulated is the hatch. And uh, that's 91. That's 91 degrees compared to 83. So that's about an eight degree difference. And it might not seem like a lot, but the less heat you have transferring down into the house, the cooler it is and it's worked out really well. Now, if you wanna see, there's absolutely no insulation in our messy bedroom. What there is, is a terrace over the top of it. So you got this concrete over the top, you got concrete here, you got the Hardy Flex. And without insulation, this is 79.3. Massive difference, massive difference. Huh. So, and that's our gun safe. See, the problem with the gun safe is it's only got three numbers on it. It's only the three round thing. So at some point when Zoe gets older, we gotta put a more complicated locking system on it because we don't want her getting into the home defense system. Again, we got all kinds of storage space. That's what I did today. I was, I was organizing 
This is my closet. I'm not going to show you cheat chats because you just just uh, stock full of everything. But this is all I'm keeping, man. This is all I'm keeping. I got my shorts. I got my underwear. I got my tank tops. I got my t-shirts. And I got 10 pair of socks, which I'm never going to wear. That's all you need. And if we go out here, you'll see this giant bag of stuff. This is all stuff that I'm going to be giving away. It's full of t-shirts, large, extra large, shorts, socks, you name it, it's in there. So if you have been stuck here in the Philippines and you're in dire need of clothes, uh, just shoot me a PM. So, ladies and gentlemen, and we tacked it down. We didn't spend a whole a lot of hardware tacking it down. We basically just did the ends with what, like elongated carpet tacks. So if the owner doesn't want to compensate us for, and I don't think they will, it's not like our old landlord who was like, yeah, sure, man, man, just do it and I'll take it out of the rent. We can actually just take it out, bring it out, and take it with us to our next spot, our next destination, if there is going to be a next destination. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can stay here for a long time. I'm hoping we can stay here for baby number two. Again, though, that's a Philippine dream, so you never know what's going to happen. Um, keep in mind, again, when you got concrete like this, 105, 109, 115 degrees, you get those flying sunshades. They only cost like 500 pesos each. I forgot how many square meters they cover. But basically, I'm just going to be putting eye hooks into the concrete there. And we're going to be running either nylon or the wire. And we're just going to get some hollow blocks and we're just going to throw them over here with the wire attached. So this is going to be the anchoring point over here. And in the case of winds, it'll give it some leeway. This is an abandoned house, by the way. It might be haunted. So hopefully at some point we're going to have at least 60 to 70% of this concrete covered so it won't be as hot out here. But again, living as close to the beach as we are in Banilad, it's, uh, the temperatures are good. Uh, the scooter, the scooter when life was so much simpler. Nothing epitomizes more the simplicity of living a good, easy life in the Philippines than a scooter. Up, oh, and that's the wife. I should probably respond to that. Hold on. Uh. Remember what I said about simple life? Uh. Yes, dear. I was just, I was, I was just making a short video, which turned out to be like a 25-minute video. What's up? Okay, so I will just go come pick you guys up now. Yes, please. Zoe, Zoe, whoa, 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 we, a Zoe baby. All right, all right. Um, so that's about it. Uh, this is Neb. Janice with a towel on her head, and we'll see you next time on My Philippine Dreams. Puppies, rainbows, unicorns, and 10mm polystyrene radiant barrier for all. See you next time on My Philippine Dreams. Bye. Hey, if you consider our work to be of any value, consider supporting us on Patreon. If you're a Patreon, you get a free copy of my ebook, and we do monthly Google Hangouts. So consider doing that, if you would, please.